2003 were at 38 EMS B60D Lane, Indiana. This is the interview of Tex Sellers. He was born June 25th, 1932. His current address is 4511 South Landis Street. I'm Kylie Jackson, and this is the Veterans History Project. What war did you serve in? Korean War. What branch? Marine Corps. What was your rank? Sergeant. And where were you stationed? South of North Korea. Were you drafted or did you enlist? I enlisted. Um, were you living in Fairmount at the time that you enlisted? Uh, I lived in Marion, Indiana. Um, why did you enlist? Well, I was going to be drafted anyway, and I wanted to be in the Marine Corps for the best training I could get. Do you recall the first days in service? Yes, I do. What was it like away from home? That was my first time ever away from home. I didn't mm -hmm. like it. <laughs> I bet. What was boot camp like? It was extremely rough. And at that old Marine Corps, they, were, they were, had the right to be brutal to you if they wanted to. Yeah. What kind of things? Well, they uh, would hit you with a sword. <laughs> Shove your own weapon into your head. Do, do you remember your instructors? Yes, I remember them clearly. What were they like? Well, actually, uh, they were good Marines. Mm -hmm. And they were very stern because we were getting ready to go into a war. And I didn't understand at the time, but yeah. that's, that's why they were so hard on us. Yeah. So it was for the better? It was. Um, what did you do to keep yourself motivated while in boot camp? Well, I kept thinking it'll soon be over. <laughs> <laughs> Um, where were you stationed? San Diego, California. Um, do you remember arriving and what it was like? Yes, I remember my, my first day when I got off the truck. They started yelling at me immediately and calling me names. <laughs> that had to feel good. Um, what was your assignment? At, the at that time? Yeah. Well, it was boot camp. My assignment was right. to take the training. Yeah. Um, were there many casualties in your unit? Yes, there were. Um, what was your most memorable experience during your time there? Being shot at. <laughs> what was that <laughs> like? It scared me. I <laughs> bet. Yeah. Um, were you a prisoner of war? No, I could run too fast. <laughs> I, uh, got, me and six other Marines got left behind in North Korea a mile and an eighth in front of our own front lines. And we had to make our way back without being captured at 4 o'clock in the morning. Wow. It was in March, and the rice paddies were frozen over. And I think I covered that mile in about eight minutes flat. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. <laughs> um, were you awarded any medals or citations? Yeah, my whole unit did. Oh, really? What were those? Presidential citations, Korean uh, presidential citation, and uh, two battle stars. Um, uh, what sort of injuries did you sustain while you were there? Well, they were <clears throat> self-inflicted. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, was digging a foxhole and uh, took my cold weather coat off, which my ammunition belt was made to go around that. And then when it was all dug in, I, I ran down to tell the captain that we were in position and my gun belt fell down around my ankles and I tripped and fell and <laughs> about killed myself. <laughs> I fell on <over> some rocks. <laughs> oh man. Um, can you tell me anything about uh, battle planning? Is that? Well, yeah. I'll, uh, my initial time in the battle was. We, We were sent there to uh, slow down a suicide attack. Yeah. Okay, you want me to stop? Okay, um, how did you stay in touch with your family while you were there? Well, it was all by mail, and it took six weeks for a round trip letter then. Wow. Um, what was the food like? Well, we ate sea rations. And, uh, Sometimes they were frozen. We'd chip it out with our bayonet, put it in your mouth, and when it thawed, you swallowed it. <laughs> wow. Sounds good. 
Uh, did you have plenty of the supplies you needed? Yes, we did. You had all that stuff. Um, was there anything special that you did for uh, good luck? No. Prayed. Mm. Yeah, I didn't believe in good luck. <laughs> How did um, people entertain themselves? Like, what kind of things did you do? Uh, jokes. Yeah. Had a few practical jokes. <laughs> I bet. Like what? Hmm? Any, yeah, any good ones? Guy could sleep really sound when he wake up. He could find himself somewhere he wasn't supposed <laughs> to be. <laughs> um, so there were people that kind of were the head of the jokes. Yeah. You know, the entertainers. But see, we didn't we didn't have water to drink in Korea. Oh really? We drank beer. <laughs> That'll bring out. Some and we beer. were out of case every other day. It was called Valentine Ale. It was two three beer. Mm-hmm. But you could drink enough of it. You didn't care whether you were in a war or not. <laughs> and some guys did silly things with it. <laughs> bet. Um, what did you do while you were on leave? Were you? Well, I got only got one leave when I was in Korea. I was there 14 months. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was six months of combat. After I came out of combat, they let me go to Japan for uh, a week on R&R. Mm-hmm. And I got to see all the temples and take pictures, and I was I was a tourist, a real tourist. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, uh, so during your tra- like travel during the service, Japan, did you go anywhere else? No. Um, I was in Japan twice. We stopped going over there. Oh, in Yokohama. From, oh, okay. from there. Um, do you have photographs? Yes, I have a whole book full. Okay. Uh. They're not here. Okay, well. Um, did you keep a personal diary? No, I didn't. Um, do you keep in touch with some of your fellow soldiers? Yeah, they're, most of them are all long gone, except mm-hmm. one, uh, one I was in Korea with in Chicago named Duke Hofstetter. Do you, do you still talk to him? No, not very often. He had a bad accident. Uh, um, do you recall the day your service ended? Yes, I do. Where were you at? I was in Barstow, California, mm. at a Marine base, and uh, it felt funny to leave. Really? Yeah. Uh, after those 14 months? No, I was after. Oh, well, after. I got You talk about when I got discharged? Yeah, yeah. Discharged or left Korea? Um, well, when you left Korea, what was? Yeah, after being there 14 months, you know, you become uh, acclimated. Yeah. And it felt strange. To leave it knowing I was never going to do that again. Yeah. It felt good and strange, and uh, I left I was leaving my friends behind, but I was going home. There was a lot of mixed emotions. I bet. What about um, the day that you were discharged? Yeah, well, I knew I had to come home and find a job. <laughs> <laughs> Marine Corps wasn't going to keep me anymore. <laughs> um, did you go work or did you go back to school? I went to work. Um, what kind of? I went to construction work, masonry construction. Uh, did you join a veterans organization? No, I didn't. Um, your construction career, did you continue that no, after I, the war? No, I went to work for General Motors shortly after that. Okay. Uh, did your military experience influence your thinking about war or about the military in general? Well, yes. Uh, I'm glad I did it. Mm-hmm. But you could never make me do it again. Yeah. So, uh, um, how did the your service and experiences affect the way you, you think and your life today? Well, you really appreciate life. Yeah, I bet. It's kind of hard to know. So. I still remember all my friends. Yeah. Um, and uh, the ones that didn't come home with me. Remember shoemaker. Yeah. Um. And once I uh, I was reported missing in action and, and I wasn't. Oh really? That's when we got left behind in Korea and uh, mm-hmm. they thought we were gone. Mm-hmm. And we came in <clears throat> much later after my unit to move back to a regrouping area. Mm-hmm. And so we went made our way on back there after we crossed the main line of defense and went on back and uh, we had tents with sandbags around them. Mm-hmm. We went into our tent and just collapsed, you know, <laughs> and just, and about noon a fellow woke me up and said, 
are you sellers? I said, well, yeah. Aren't we? He said, well, is this your fire team? I said, yes, it is. He said, well, you better get up to CP. They're riding out missing in action letters on you because they couldn't find you last night. I said, oh, Lord, I can't let my mom and dad <laughs> get that letter. <laughs> um, uh, is there anything else you would like to add? That, anything else you want to talk about? Well, yeah, one time uh, well, during a combat, I started to get a real serious toothache. Mm -hmm. And I kept telling them I have a really bad tooth. Mm. Of course, the, they pretty much ignored. Yeah. Until I couldn't open, they got so obsessed I couldn't open my mouth. So then they realized, and I, and I was writhing in pain. So they gave me a Jeep and directions. And when I got there, there was a tent in a field and they had a Navy dentist set up in that tent out in the middle of a field. And they couldn't numb my tooth because it was so obsessed. So they pried my mouth open and put wedges in it took a little hammer and chisel and split it in two pieces and took it out anyway. Uh, that's that nice. <laughs> I wanted to pass out and I couldn't. <laughs> and I'll still remember that Dennis's name. I see his face. His name was Commander McKivitt. <laughs> and he felt so sorry for me that there was nothing they could do but just take it out. Um, what do you think about the current situation in Korea? Yeah. Well, I don't. I have no idea. Yeah. It that was over my head, you know. Oh. I was just, uh, I was just, uh, I was just what to call a grunt, you know. You shoot at me, I shoot back. Yeah. And, uh, but if I was a president, I'd be knocking on North Korea's door, saying, "That's enough." Yeah. That's. Thank you.